when I came to know that the Holy Spirit was actually a person who dwelt within me and someone I could rely upon, that changed my thinking around the role of the Holy Spirit even in my everyday life. A lot of people wonder, what does a Spirit-led life look like? And uh, I can tell you how what I thought it looked like in my early days after giving my life to Christ, because I gave my life to Christ in probably the, the mid to tail end of what they called the charismatic renewal, which was around the 80s, that kind of thing. And so for me, when I was thinking about a spirit-led life, it meant this guy standing up the front and coming up with all these things about people and then calling them out the front and them all falling over. And so that's what it, it was kind of like a combination of church and a David Copperfield magic show. And, and that was kind of what I grew up in. I think, well, that, that's what it's got to be. Until one day, then I, um, uh, I don't advise you doing this, by the way. I decided to go and check up on all the people that he called out to see how many were healed. And to my dismay, no one was healed. And I thought, that's just cruel, God, what's going on? So I realized that's not really what it means to be spirit-led. At the same time, at the same time, we had these guys traveling around that were prophets to the nations, and they came out, and they always had deep voices and big fingers. I don't know why they had big fingers, and they punch you out. You! And it's like, so that's what it means to be spirit-led. And then I realized, hang on, the Scriptures teach that John the Baptist was the last prophet to the nations before Jesus came and then Jesus was the culmination so it's like well that's not it so that's what I grew up in so it was kind of hard for me to figure out well I can't really do that because I just grew up in a band so what about you so your experience that you described there is the reason why I grew up feeling like the Holy Spirit was something really weird and like, I, so as a young child, my family went to a traditional church, the Dutch Reformed Church, and um, everything was pews and hymns. I actually still love hymns. Um, so there was just a lot of tradition. But in that context, we were taught, probably indirectly, I don't remember anyone ever standing up the front saying that. Um, that it was wrong. I just felt it was wrong because it wasn't experienced in our church setting. But um, that the Holy Spirit and all of that stuff that you described was the thing that the happy clappies did. Oh, I was one, of the, ha- I was one of the happy the clappies. Happy clappies. <laughs> and not something you did if yeah. you were a real Christian. Okay, so oh, that right. was the sort of the... So you're saying I wasn't a real Christian? Well, apparently not. Oh, so <laughs> that, was, that was the Some thought. of you think that now, you know, like, you know. <laughs> That was some of the teaching that I had had growing up. So I grew up with a bit of a fear of this weird thing that was the Holy Spirit, a thing, see? And I I always thought of it as something out there and I did not want to go near that because that was part of a spirit world that I didn't want any part of. And probably mixed in with that was some of my teenage experiences of um, supernatural and spiritual things around Um, things that we should have nothing to do with. So uh, Ouija boards and different things like that, that friends of mine were all involved with and that weirded me out too and made me feel really yuck on the inside. So in that, yeah, so that was sort of my thinking around what what a life with the spirit looks like and I was scared of it. Wow. And and the... But we'll talk about it a bit later, but when you actually then encountered the Holy Spirit, some things really shifted in your life, you know. And I think it's important for us to realize is this. It is perfectly natural to be spiritual and it's perfectly spiritual to be natural. Mm. They're not, they're hand in glove together. You, you read the teachings of Jesus. You look at the apostles. Sometimes they did some kind of strange things like Jesus said, hey, go get a fish out of there and there'll be a gold coin in its mouth. But it wasn't the weird stuff that sometimes people portray what it means to be living a spirit-led life. It's important that you understand that we are first and foremost spirit. We have a soul and we are clothed in flesh for a season. That flesh is now corrupt due to the fall that happened way back with Adam and Eve. But we're walking in that kind of space. So there's that threefold part to us. Uh, But it is perfectly natural to be spiritual. It's perfectly spiritual to be natural. So talk a little bit about like how does that work? What's it look like for you being spirit-led? So what does a spirit-led life look like? So you've got a story. Tell us about the dog and the ute. Oh, the dog and the ute. Uh, (laughs) 
tell it quickly because uh, we would to run out of time. It sounds more to me like this should be a country song. You know, like, <laughs> uh, I was driving down the uh, the M1 motorway and I was in the fast lane and I'm tearing down there in my LJ Tirana. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a good car. And uh, suddenly I just had this this sense that I should brake. And I was just about to pass this chute. And God says, hit the brakes now. And I go, what? I'm in the fast lane. Hit the brakes now. So anyway, I, after about three of us, it got more intense. Like, hit the brakes. So I hit the brakes. And this whopping great dog leapt off the back of this chute. And if I wouldn't have hit the brakes at that moment, the thing would have come straight through the windscreen. It's like, that was like, what was that? So that was a like a oh, wow, out of this world, Holy Spirit moment. It was for the dog, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm it was sure. definitely for the dog. But I was thinking the about... The dog was okay, by the way. It hit the road, span around, and then took off into the bush. So that, that's awesome, because the Holy Spirit sort of guided you. Um, I think about what, it, what does it mean to lead a Spirit-led life, more in terms of the day-to-day. So for me, it would be um, the parents who are trying to figure out how to deal with their troubled child, maybe, and they are spirit-led in that. Or the dad who chooses to give up extra work that he could do on the weekend to earn extra cash to spend time with his kids, and he's spirit-led in that decision. Um, So he follows 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 that gut thing, that prompt to say, okay, I could make another $10,000, but my kids... I'm my, missing, they I'm need me it. right now. And so they, they, yeah, that's great. To be spirit led in that. Last week, we actually, uh, Ruth shared with us that there were 40 Philippine students that needed sponsoring uh, over in the Philippines. And a whole bunch of you were spirit led to go and sponsor them. And all 40 of the church planters, the potential church planters, were sponsored last week. And that's a spirit led prompt. Yeah, you can clap. Yeah. It's awesome. But, Thank you for your love and generosity. And but what made you do that? The what happened inside you? What was that prompt inside of you? That's a spirit-led prompt. You know, people normally outside don't part with their cash, mm. you know, unless something happens. And that's, mm. that's, it's so natural to be spiritual and spiritual to be natural. And it's such a a spirit-led decision to be generous in that way also. And there'll be whole communities that are impacted across the Philippines because 40 young people are going to be trained to plant churches uh, over there, which is so exciting. I learned about this this dynamic of the Holy Spirit within as what Ruth was sharing about connected to creation. Like, uh, he was there at the beginning. He knows everything. He's, you know, there's nothing he doesn't know, which came in really handy when it came to tests when I was... In things because like I don't know the answer but you do you know <laughs> but I learned this I, I, I'd given my life to Christ at 21 years of age I went out to a youth bonfire night and we're out there and there was some weird stuff going on and then the Lord said to me go and talk to that girl over there Sandra I said okay and I, so I went and said hello to her she was goth and quite strange and then the Lord said to me just ask her directly what do you need to know to give your life to Christ and I'm thinking, why would I ask that question? I don't know anything. And he said, go and ask her. So I, I did. And she said, okay, well, could I live over here. Could you drop me home? And I said, yeah, okay. Went back to her place. And then we sat on these two seats. And she just started firing questions at me. One after the other from 9 a.m. to like quarter past, 9 p.m. to quarter past four in the morning. And at quarter past four in the morning, then she just kneels on the floor. And I go, what are you doing? And she goes, I'm ready to give my life to Christ. And I suddenly realized, I don't know how to do that. And so what do we do? I'll just kneel down with you and we'll just pray. But I rattled off answer after answer after answer. And the whole time this is coming out of my my mouth, I'm thinking, I sure hope this is in the Bible somewhere. You know, because I haven't even read it yet. I, I don't know. And, you know, it took me about two and a half years. And it actually created a hunger in me to search the Scriptures And over about the next two and a half years, I discovered that everything that I shared was in the Scriptures for her. And I hadn't learned it. So that's why I say to people, don't think that when you give your life to Christ, oh, well, I don't know enough to do anything. You don't. But the one that dwells within you, 
knows everything, so it's cool. And I love that that is the core of what being spirit-led is about, is about surrendering to that Holy Spirit that dwells within. Uh, and the video, Nikki Gumbel talked about him being uh, the paracletos, like the counsellor, yep. the person who guides us. Um, and when I came to know that the Holy Spirit was actually a person who dwelt within me and someone I could rely upon, that changed my thinking around w the role of the Holy Spirit even in my everyday life which was really awesome. Mm. Really, it's uh, the Holy Spirit. It, it's, it's about you getting to the place where you have the ability to surrender your will to His will. It comes with that part. It's like the, the less of you that's in the way, the more the Holy Spirit can work. And that's the challenge. And that really, you, you see that with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, at a soul level, He is in immense pain and he's saying, Lord, if there's any way that I don't have to go through this, this would be really neat if we could find another way. There's no other way. Okay, well, then not my will, which is to use from the soul to try and control the world, but your will, I'll set whatever that is. So you see that. And so being a, leading a spirit-led life oftentimes takes you out of your comfort zone. You see that uh, again, where Jesus goes down to the woman at the well in Samaria. He's a Jewish boy. Jews do not go into Samaria. They'll walk 20 kilometers around it. And Jesus is going into Samaria. So already he knows at a soul level, he goes, this is not going to go well. They're not going to like me for this. And then not only does he go into Samaria, then he starts talking to a woman at a well, which Jewish guys don't talk to a woman, full stop. And they definitely don't talk to a Samaritan one. And then it gets even worse because she's there in the middle of the day because she won't go with the other women to the well in the morning and the evening because she's lived an immoral life and she's had five husbands. And so Jesus would be dealing with at a soul level, he's going through this turmoil this is going to really wind everybody up but I'm going to go here because it's important that I go here there is a woman here that has a dreadful thirst that she's trying to meet out of uh, intimacy with human beings that can only come through a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit so that's part and parcel of being spirit-led sometimes you get pulled into places that you're out of your comfort zone uh, but you got to learn to operate out of the spirit realm rather than out of your flesh. And that can be an out-of-the-box uh, decision or choice. And we see that also with the disciples. All the disciples. In the scripture, uh, I was reflecting on just the call that each disciple had to follow Jesus and thinking about what they would have had to have left behind. Uh, they had an encounter with him and they had the Spirit of God calling them and they had to make a choice to step away from their income, their families, their support, their business, what they were doing, uh, to step out of their comfort zone and follow Jesus and be spirit-led in all of life. There's, defi there's definitely a cost to, be, to follow the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will lead from God's perspective and God's ways are different to yours and they're different to mine. Your flesh is going to go one direction <laughs> And the Spirit of God is going to say something completely counterintuitive. Like Jesus says, you want to be great? Be the slave of all. Your flesh is not going to buy into that at all. What do you mean be the slave of all? Yeah, if you really want to be number one, be the servant. I don't really like that idea of being the servant. Well, that's kind of how it is, you know. And don't repay evil with evil, but yeah. repay it with good and love your enemies. That's love your enemies. Woo. A counterculture. Israel didn't really buy into that at all. And <laughs> not at all. You know, they destroy their enemies often. But Jesus comes and goes, love your enemies. Wow. It's like so counterintuitive. But you have to live from that place with, within. Let, let me give you a quick, quick example. Hold your hand up like that. Let's just, no, little hole there. Let's just say that's the center of your being. This is where I, I, I disagree with all the, all the teaching around about body, soul, and spirit, just so you know. So you might want to go with those guys, but never mind. At the center, at the core of your being is the spirit of God. That's the breath of life. It says, in God, we live and move and have our being. It says, when we die, that part, that goes straight back to God. Here is your soul. That's given to you. That's your personality. That's how you interact and you can interact and walk with God. This is the part that when Adam and Eve sinned, fell into darkness. Outside this is your flesh. You're closed with flesh. So you can choose from here to integrate through here, drawing from the spirit, or you can choose to draw from the flesh. That's the challenge. When you're going to be spirit-led, 
This part here, if it's not regenerated, if you're not surrendering your life to Christ, and you've got no light in there, it sits in darkness, you're just going to sin, 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 there's no way out of it. But if that's regenerated, you still have free will, which means you could still choose to live out of the flesh, or you could choose to, you know what, no, I'm going to love my enemies and live from the Spirit. So, Galatians 2.20 says, uh, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live in faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Yeah, it's my life verse. It is. I said my life first, I had, to, I had to live by that verse because I was, my flesh is too strong to want to work within its own strength. So I had to learn that. So how, so taking it to a practical level uh, now, how do we develop a spirit-led life? We, I think one of the first things that I think about when I think about being spirit-led is um, having a life of prayer, and that can take on many forms. Uh, some people think praying needs to be on my knees when I get out of bed in the morning and solely focused on God, and it can be, and that's wonderful if you have time to do that. But when I hit the ground running in the morning, I'm not really um, focusing on you know, half an hour in solitude and prayer, I'm learning to pray without ceasing. And the scripture talks about that. And that has been um, something I have intentionally, personally focused on in my own life to be able to pray in all things and just talk to God as if he's right there with me because he is uh, throughout the day, asking him for help, asking him for guidance, asking him to guide and lead. Um, and it's that yep. whole idea of having one ear listening. And you say this all the time, one ear listening to the Holy Spirit and one eye and ear looking out in the world that we're in today and asking God, who is it that needs interaction today? Who is it that needs a sort of input from you? And how can I serve yeah. in that? If you don't adopt that principle of praying without ceasing, which Brother Lawrence called it practicing the presence of God, you become aware of the presence of God all the time. If you don't step into that place, you will miss so many opportunities because opportunities will come and you'll go, I need to go and pray about that. Too late. It's over. You miss it. You've got to be able to be in a state of constant prayer and communion with Jesus over these things so that you can interact and be full and led by the Spirit each mm. time. And that comes with the second thing we would do to lead a spirit-led life is to train your ear to hear his voice. And we talk about it every week here, which is soap devotions. So connecting with God through his word for yourself, not reading uh, someone else's take on what the scripture says. Devotional booklets are great. The daily bread is awesome, but nothing compares to connecting with the word of God for yourself and hearing from God uh, for yourself through his word. And that's what Soap Devotions enables us to do. We have a scripture. We observe what is it saying to us. We write down what our application is and what our prayer is for the day. Um, Just bouncing back to that first one, pray without ceasing. This might help you. I don't know. This is what I do. This is my practice. Like last thing before I go to sleep, I pray. I say, Lord, you know, talk to me about today. Where did I, where did I miss it? Where did I miss moments from you? Where did I kind of catch what you were leading? And then, and then I say, Lord, I'm going to sleep now. Well, my body is, but my soul's not sleeping and you're not sleeping. So I invite you to continue to do a work in me and prepare me ready for tomorrow so that I might be a vessel for you in every circumstance. And then when I wake in the morning, first thing I do is say, okay, Lord, this is a new day. Who do you want to encourage? Who do you want to bless? As I'm looking at the rhythms and routines of my life and I'm continually just looking that way. That's, that positions me at the two parts of the day, the start and the end, to mm -hmm. continually just keep my consciousness towards the things of the Spirit. So, so prayer, soap, and the third one would be to just choose, like the power of choice. Yeah. We all get a choice to choose to obey and follow. We can wake up and choose to follow his path for our day, or we can choose our own way. Put your hand back up. And I think that that... <laughs> See, flesh on the outside, this is your soul, this is your personality, and you can still choose, you still, it gives you free will, you can choose to live out of the realm of the Spirit, which will be counterintuitive to the world, or you can use the senses within the soul area to live out of your flesh. Either way, you get to choose. However, <clears throat> even though you're free to choose, <clears throat> you're not free of the consequences of your cho choices. So therefore, if you choose the flesh, it says you will reap destruction from that. And I think we can all recall times where we may be chosen not such a good way and it's kind of backfired on us. 
So I think for you today, um, what is it in your life, a path that you need to choose or how can you um, really carry the presence of God into every part of your life? We want to read from 1 John 4 verse 13. Um, It says, by this we know with confident assurance, this is the Amplified Version, that we will abide in him and he in us because he has given us his Holy Spirit. I just love that verse because, and there's a whole other teaching here about the vine and the branches and abiding in him and choosing to be uh, in him. But there's that whole idea of being with him and having him with you in every area of your life, at work, at school, at uni, uh, in the everyday, in the friendships we have, uh, in the conversations and interactions that we have today. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was the dynamic of the Holy Spirit that transformed the first century. First century when everybody, like the, the church was so irresistible. It was so irresistible because people were living from the realm of the Spirit. And so they were completely counter to the rest of the biting and devour Roman culture that was around and the culture of the day. So they became so attractive. And I think that's for us is that the more we allow the Holy Spirit to have control and we live from the Holy Spirit, the more we become contagious. And people look, it's, scriptures say that nobody can see God and live because he is so holy. So what did God do? He clothed himself in flesh in Jesus so that we could see what he is like. But guess what? Now... How do people see God now? In us. They see God in us, mm. clothed in flesh when we submit to him and allow the Holy Spirit to have control. Mm. It's just, this is really what John the Baptist prayed when he said, I have to decrease that he may increase. Mm. And the more he increases, the greater, the greater the effectiveness for the kingdom. Mm. So good. Mm. So the question we leave you with today is what would happen if we all surrendered to uh, God today and surrendered to the Holy Spirit and chose a spirit-led life over a life driven by our flesh? Yeah. So what we're going to do for you guys online, um, we're going to actually have a time after we finished our experience this morning post where we'll give people opportunity to actually receive the Holy Spirit and to pray together and to allow for some more hands-on kind of ministry. But for right now, I would like you to consider and for everyone in this room to consider as we listen to the guys, they're going to sing a song about new wine. Uh, I want you to think about where are you living from right now? Who's calling the shots in your life? Are you calling the shots from your flesh, out of your soul, and you're trying to control the world around you, and as long as the world is in control, I'm okay? Or are you living from the confidence, the absolute confidence of the Holy Spirit within you? He's in control. It's up to Him. It's up to Him to outwork through. My job is just to submit to Him, to surrender to Him. I have a key thing that I say all the time, Lord, you just, you lead, I'll follow. You lead, I'll follow. And then when I get stressed, you know what happens? I lead, you follow. Come on, God, I lead, you follow. (laughs) And everything goes to custard. And it's no, no, no. You lead, I will follow. It's about submitting and surrendering ourselves. I just have a quick story around that, that I was just thinking of then, as you were saying about you lead, I follow. Um, When Indy was very brand new and we just brought her home from hospital and I had put her to sleep in the cot upstairs and we were in a two-story house and I'd gone downstairs. I had this like overwhelming fear come over me and I had to run upstairs and go and check on her. Now she was sleeping in the cot and um, those of you who know the new mum hormones and everything else that goes with that and it was the day we'd got home from hospital and I ran upstairs and just had this like And I looked at her in the cot and was, and I said, God, I just don't know if I can do this. Like I was totally, completely, I'm still emotional when I think about it now, like totally overwhelmed at the sheer responsibility of a tiny life. And um, just, and God spoke to me in that moment of anxiety and stress. And I was like, I felt like I had to sit by her and watch her to make sure she was breathing. Like it was that sort of crazy, like, um, but anyway, it, and God really clearly spoke to me and said, um, 
I will guide and lead you. She is not yours. She is here for you to uh, caretake. Like you're, you're guiding and leading and nurturing her. You're a caretaker over her. We've, we've gifted her to you. She's mine. She belongs to me. And I, in that moment of God really spoke to my heart and said the parenting process is to be spirit led. Um, and He will guide and lead you through every step of it. And I just, I thank God for the Holy Spirit because in every area where I feel inadequate and I can't do this, I know that the Holy Spirit in me is greater than anything I can do. And He actually doesn't even want me to try and control it. He just wants me to surrender and relax in that and know that He can guide and lead if I choose it. So in my humanity, I can choose to snatch it back, like you said, I'll lead and you follow. And I do that because I am like a structured person who likes to control things. And I've learned over the years that I can't, I have to allow him to control in those areas of my life. And I just want to encourage you with that to say, being spirit led in your own life changes you, but it also changes the people in your life. Absolutely. Like my kids are experiencing a different childhood because Chris and I have chosen to be spirit led in our parenting, which was not something we had when we were growing up. So it impacts on them and it it feeds into the next generation and you can make a difference today by choosing that path. Well, why don't you, just as we're going to go into this song, why don't you just pray for everyone because that, what, that issue there you just threw out is so significant. Every bit of counselling I go into, it's like the wife wanting to change the husband or the husband wanting to change the wife. And it's like, it's like, and it's this battle of wills coming out of the soul that's still sitting in darkness. And it's like, well, it's not your job to change them. It's your job to love them. Let God do the changing. So how about you pray? Because that's, that's once again, a, 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 it bases itself out of fear because it feels like if I, I've, I've got to fix them. If I don't fix them, they're going to go to hell or something like that. I, I, it's like, it's still not your job to fix them. It's your job to love them and allow Christ to be seen through you and not control it. Allow the Holy Spirit to have control. And I tell you, when you do drop into that place, Life gets so much easier. So you pray. Father God, I just thank you for your spirit. Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that is available to each and every one of us. And Lord, I pray that today we would open our hearts to the guiding and the leading of your spirit. Lord, that we would choose to be spirit led. Father, I pray that uh, where people are suffering from anxiety and fear around situations, Lord, that you would remove that. Father, that there would be a peace that replaces that, a peace that passes all understanding, a peace that comes only from the Spirit of God that is within us. And Lord, I pray that you would help us today to surrender to that. Lord, to choose that over the stress and the fear uh, and the control. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be able to surrender. And Lord, that you would guide and lead us in every decision, in every major decision and the minor ones too. And Lord, that people in our world would be impacted. The people we come across on the rhythms and routines of our own life would know that there's something different about our life because we are spirit led, because we are tapped into the vine. Father, I just thank you for your faithfulness to us. And Lord, I just thank you for... Uh, the Holy Spirit, the counsellor who guides and leads us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.